Hey there, Lick and Riffers, and welcome back to yet another awesome lesson here on Lick and Riff, in which we're going to try to address one of the most important questions that keep coming up in the comments section. And this question goes like this. How important is it really to keep perfect time, to keep perfect, metronomic, quantized, straight on the beat, straight on the off beats, straight on all of those micro beats? How important is it to really play perfectly? Okay, to keep perfect time. And there are several answers to this. There's the simplistic answer, and then there's the more elaborate discussion on this. And uh, I'm gonna give you both. We're gonna start with the simplistic answer. The simplistic answer is that as human beings, okay, as living, breathing human beings, we are not capable, no matter how much we try, we're just not capable of playing perfectly. We're not capable of keeping perfect time. It's a futile endeavor, okay? Um, the only genre of music where you have perfect time, okay, completely perfect, is electronic music, synthesized digital computer-generated music, okay? Other than that, you never get anywhere near perfection when it comes to keeping time, all right? That's a simplistic answer. The more elaborate answer, um, I would like to start it by asking you a couple of questions. Have you ever been to a live concert where the energy levels were just off the charts, okay, where the band just killed it, and, and the music was just amazing. And then a new album came out by that same band, and the album was a total bust. It was totally boring. It lacked energy. Everything you experienced in that live performance is just gone from the album and um, there's a very straightforward explanation for why that keeps happening and that is that on stage the band isn't looking to play perfectly on time okay they don't care about the metronome about keeping perfect quantized time and in the recording studio whether they record live or they record layer by layer okay, in different channels separately, they have a metronome okay, running a click in their ears and the headphones, especially the drummer. And then the music, okay, there's this confinement. There's, it's, they're forced to keep perfect time so the music comes out perfect. And it kills the album, it kills the energy, it kills the recording. And this search for perfection gets exactly the opposite result. And uh, the music might be, you know, timed perfectly, but it's, you know, it, it lacks everything that music should be. Now, the second question I have for you is, Forget about professional players. Think about YouTube, okay? How many times have you watched a virtuoso musician, okay? A virtuoso player, um, just a master of the instrument on YouTube, play a piece, a complicated piece, a complicated solo, uh, no matter on, not only on the guitar, mind you, okay, uh, a pianist, a cellist, you know, even a drummer. And even though they're at such a high technical level and they're masters of the instrument, no doubt, and they're virtuosos, each and every one of them, and yet, again, the music is just boring. The music is dead. There's no life to the music. There's no vibration. There's no energy. That's the result of playing, trying to play perfectly. Trying to play perfectly leads to killing the music. And you hear it 
you know, over and over again. It happens all the time. People, uh, people keep mistaking technical excellence with playing good music. And playing good music has nothing to do with technical excellence. If you've taken my free workshop on Lickenref, lickenref.com, okay, there's a free three-hour workshop waiting for you. I address that at length, okay? To make great music, all you need is to feel the music. Once you feel the music and you're in the zone and you're expressing yourself on the instrument, instead of, you know, trying to copy something or repeat something perfectly, okay, which results in a facsimile copy, uh, a dead, a lifeless copy of the music that you're imitating, okay? As long as you're feeling the music, you're gonna make beautiful music. But the more you focus on your technique and on perfection, you're moving away from feeling the music. So the perfection actually backfires. So, um, yes, you need to keep good time. You need to keep great time. But perfect time? Not in the least. That's, that's my opinion, okay? If you, um, you know, don't take my word for it, okay? Take a metronome, take a tapping metronome, you know, you, the, a, a tap metronome where you can tap the beat and, um, you know, play it with a, with a video on YouTube, with a recording of a professional player, okay? A solo player, okay? Not a band, because again, a band has the metronome in their headphones while they record. Um, Try, you know, any fingerstyle master on YouTube. Just, you know, hear them play, tap the metronome, and you'll see that pretty quickly they're no longer following the metronome. The, the rhythm changes because that's human. That's human. We, we can't. We just can't. We're not robots. We can't keep perfect time no matter what we do. And that's just natural. And that is what makes music sound natural. Again, the more you strive for keeping perfect time, the more you seep the life out of your music. That's my two cents about it. And I would like to read your opinion if you have a different opinion than, uh, than mine. So um, I'll just give you one last uh, idea. If, if you... Um, if you're a jazz aficionado, then you might agree with the statement that jazz is pretty much dead, okay? Um, because uh, jazz players nowadays, they have perfect technique, all of them. They have perfect technique, they have all the knowledge in the world um, about jazz and jazz improvisa improvisation and jazz uh, composition and whatnot, and yet, there hasn't been a really good jazz innovation in at least 20 years um, because, because everything is too perfect. It's too perfect. It's too quantized. It's too on the beat. The notes are perfect. The dynamics are perfect. It sounds like, again, it sounds like a lifeless facsimile copy of what jazz should be. They're taking absolutely no risks. And music is also a little bit about not knowing what's gonna come next, not knowing how it's gonna sound, not knowing exactly what's gonna come out, even if you have played it a thousand times before. So uh, thank you for listening to uh, my elaborate answer. Uh, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Go watch the workshop if you haven't. Lickinref.com. Bye now.